When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly you should be watching me in black and white right now. As you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description. Today I am using the BH Blueberry Muffin palette to create an eye look. So, if you want to find out how good this is, whether it's as good as the ice cream palettes, how well it performs, and most importantly, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. And my friends, as I've said, for some considerable time, and often it echoed on other less imaginative channels, but they don't have Sammy the Sloth Straw backing them up. <laughs> Honestly, I get worse. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Right, okay, I will have shown you this on the intro, well the outside of it anyway. This is the BH Cosmetics Blueberry Muffin Palette. I absolutely blame Ari Lynette for me buying this because he put a picture of it up on uh, his Insta and I'm like, oh look at that. All those blues and periwinkles and greys and ooh. Um, so yeah, it kind of happened that I bought it. Um, I will do a haul video shortly which will include that. Um, because when I had the abscess, Painsomnia was a real thing. Even more so than it always is. And I bought a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have. However, never mind, let's get into playing with this palette. Um, because of my chronic pain, I don't go as fast as a lot of people. And because I always said that when I started a channel, I would make sure that everybody could follow it. Um, so yeah, I go at a speed that people can follow. Makes my films a bit longer, but I don't cut any of the blending out. So you can actually see how long each shadow takes to blend. Um, also I zoom in very, very close so it's just my eyes on screen. So that if your eyesight's not that good and you're watching me on a phone screen, you can still see what's happening. It does mean when I look down to change brushes or you know put more people on a brush. You get to see my delightful Widow's Peak hairline uh, but um, that's just a trade-off for being able to see what's going on really. Right, a lot of people I've noticed when I first started my channel or even before I started my channel were confusing hooded lids with deep set eyes. Now I've got deep set eyes and a lot of, I see a lot of people go, oh I've got hooded lids and I'm looking and I'm thinking, no, you've got deep set eyes like me. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute because although the way that um, pigment and eyeshadows wear through the day is very similar on those eye types, the best way to apply them to get the best look and the best longevity out of your your eyeshadow look is slightly different. So I'll insert that clip in just a minute. It is going to be up close, just my eyes, and then once that's done, I'll be back at the other end to play with some blueberry muffin. Here's your clip. Now, um my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. 
I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover the visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid it tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again. It tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with quite a floofy brush. It is clean. Um, it's just stained. I'll just wipe it on clean washcloth just to make doubly sure there's no pigment left on it. But it's just that's the problem with with white bristled brushes, unfortunately. I mean, look how stained this one has got. Oh, look at that. Anyway, let's start playing with some colour, shall we? 
Now I haven't even swatched this yet, as you can see, pans are completely untouched. So, I'm feeling a bluey look today, I think. So I'm going to start off with this Periwinkle Cheat Day shade. Now I know BH Cosmetics have done so. Whoa, 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 it's got some kick up in the pan. Look at that. Um, it's alright though. Let's see if I can bend this back. Yeah, it bends right back. Good. That makes it easy to hold. Um, I don't worry about that amount of kick up because at least you're getting pigment on the brush and you can just tap back off into the pan and pick up to build up more colour or to do the other eye. But yeah, be gentle with this palette. Um, the most recent BH palette that I used was the pistachio one, which was amazing. So let's hope this is also a similar quality. Um, I always hold the brush right at the end and if it's a long brush I'll put the end of it against the palm of my hand just to help steady it so I'll put as little pressure as possible on the eye and I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. Okay. I'm going to start over here because if it does deposit too much pigment it's much easier to deal with when you haven't got your nose in the way. I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and just start applying some of this pigment. Oh that's pretty. That is a pretty colour. I would rather have a pigment that you need to build up than one that goes on too thick, too quick, you know. And this is building really beautifully. Pick up a little bit more of that pigment. A little bit of fallout, but I do my base after my eyes anyway, so that really doesn't worry me. I used to do my base first and put a load of powder down to catch it but then that effectively bakes your under eye which when you're the correct side of 40 like I am uh, baking isn't the most um, kind thing you can do or most flattering okay that has blended really really nicely and really really easily I'll pick up some of that kick up and do the same thing with the other eye. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't been a good day, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. You can see I'm just building this colour up gently. Yeah, Ari Lynette has, been, has proven to be a real temptation. Some of the uh, palettes that he shares. And he does, um, he creates a lot of palettes too, artwork wise. And some of the colour schemes he comes out with. There was one of them that I was just so disappointed wasn't a real palette. I was just like, oh, Ari. <laughs> this is, I always do the same colour on both eyes, kind of one after the other before I then start putting other colours on because, I mean, with me, it's my fibro that does it because one day one eye can be puffier than the other and I have to use a slightly different shape to get them to look the same when my brows are relaxed and my eyes are open 
um, just one of those things and if I've put other colours on top I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell the difference in shape and that's that's one of the biggest tips I can give you is to to do each colour kind of get it done get it out of the way before you move on to the next colour just to make sure that the eyes look the same right, I'm just cleaning this off on a clean washcloth I don't like colour switches they are far too harsh on your bristles for my liking right um, I think I might actually go into fluffy which is this sort of pale peachy kind of colour to just blend that edge out a little bit just to soften it a wee bit again quite a bit of kick up in the pan but again that really doesn't worry me right if you're blending the edge of something or you're blending two colours together and you don't want a harsh line of delineation between them I found it best to start off half on the colour you're blending and half on the lid that doesn't have any colour on it um, I found that if I start above the edge and then work down I tend to get a line of demarcation I don't know why that works that way on my eyes but it does I just find I get a much smoother blend doing it this way so I would advise you to do the same and I'm literally just going along the edge with this colour which is very close to my natural skin tone it has to be said and just really softening that edge and blowing it out I would normally have done this with a blue but I'm in a different mood today It also helps cover the bright white uh, eyelid primer that I've got on my lid at the moment, which is my Chrome and Pebble one. Discount code for that is listed below. All of my discount codes are listed in the description box, um, and they all state if I make money from them. I don't like pushing codes, but if it saves you money, and the majority of mine I don't earn from anyway, so they're just a, a saving you money kind of thing. The reason that I prefer this circular blending movement is that I'm 46 and I've lost over. 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know teens that have always been slim that have similar problems. And by doing the circular movement rather than the windshield wiper that you see so many younger beauty channels doing, you're less likely to get that sort of striping or barcoding where your lid is folded over on itself. It's a dead giveaway that you're uh, perhaps not as young a chicken as you used to be. <laughs> right, I'm going for a slightly more tapered blender. And I'm going to go into... I'm going to go into So Good, which is this one here. It's a bit difficult to show you the actual colour when they do this sort of holographic... I'm just going to pop this. This is the point 
because this is the darkest shade that I'm planning to put on for the minute. If you have moved your crease, this is the point you now follow wherever you've put your crease. Because darker colours go back and lighter colours come forward. So um, by putting the deepest colour along your crease or your created crease, you're giving the indication of that part of the eye being further away. So if you have had to create a crease, it just gives that sort of, you know, trompe l'oeil effect almost of tricking the eye into thinking. You can see that that eye there has much more definition than this side does. I'm going to pop a little bit of this just on the outer edge of the mobile lid. And I might actually just pop a little bit just on the inner part. I can't see a damn thing right now, sorry. It's a problem with being blind in my left eye. When I close this one, I can't see a damn thing that's going on. Now with the other eye, because I've got these super deep creases here, I do have to just stretch this lid out a bit when I'm doing the inner corner here, because otherwise what happens is that the pigment just, instead of being blended onto the lid, packs loosely into those creases, and then throughout the day, starts crumbling into my eye and falling down my face, which is both painful and kind of ruins your eye makeup. And your makeup look, unless you want, you know, cobalt blue freckles, which, whilst pretty, not the look I'm going for today. You can see this eyelid actually moves around a lot more than my other eyelid does because this was pulled around when I was five years old. So even way back then when it was really resilient and really will pin back into shape, the damage was being done on this eye. Which is why I always say don't pull your lid out unless you already have the same issues that I do. And I only pull the lid out far enough to put the pigment on and blend it. I don't pull it out to my ear roll. And once it's done... I gently put it back into place. I don't just let go and let it ping, you know. Hmm. Blues are one of the most difficult colours to create. So the fact this is doing so well is great. Right, now I'm going to grab a small brush. This is, I believe it's a lip brush. It's a very small packing brush. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but I will be wetting the pigment with this once I've packed it onto the brush. Now, Um, you can use any spray. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. 
you can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even just save an empty bottle, fill it up under the tap with cold water every time you do your makeup. Right, I've gone into the shade Tempting, and obviously the ferrule now is wet. So I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue, because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Right, so I'm going to pop this just on the edges of the mobile lid that doesn't have colour on it. Like so. And just blend it very gently using the tip of the bristles into that matte shade. That's pretty. Right, dry the brush off and then go back in. This is a very, very soft pigment as you can see. So be very, very gentle when you're going into it, otherwise you will end up basically digging a ruddy great hole in it. Which not the best idea in the world. I like BH Cosmetics, um, they do a lot of very, very pretty palettes. I don't understand why they made their ice cream palettes limited edition though. Those are by far the best quality palettes that I've seen from BH for, well, forever really. I've got two, I've got the green one and the red one which my lovely friend Kay sent me. Bless her heart, she's always treating me. She was making an order from the American site because she wanted some of those palettes. And she knew that I wanted some and they weren't coming to Europe. So she asked, did I want to add a couple to her order? And then Obviously I could pay her and she'd send them on to me when they arrived. I'm like, oh my goodness, yes please, thank you so much. Then they arrived and she wouldn't let me pay her for them. Bless her. She's such a poppet, she really is. I get treated very, very well by my 4F family. And I appreciate every single one of you. Whether you send me things or whether you just comment or just watch or just like. Right, which colour do I want to put in the middle? That's a bloody good question. I'm really tempted by this sugared because I don't know whether it's going to have any base pigment. Ooh, yeah, it appears it does have base pigment to it. Okay. I was torn between that and sort of craving is the one next to it. Um... Right, that's sugared and that's cravings, which bizarrely look almost the same. Oh, okay, that's sugared and that's cravings. So sugared is a white and cravings has like a silver undertone to it. That's very deceptive given the colour it looks in the pan. Hmm. Um, I think I'll go in with Cravings. Just because the colour intrigues me. Hmm. And I'm going to pop this in the middle there, oh look at that, 
So enough on the brush to do this one as well. Yay, there it is, excellent. That's what I love about doing halo eyes. And I'm just gonna very gently blend those edges together just to soften them a little bit that's really pretty that's really pretty oh I'm liking this a lot folks I don't know whether BH have actually changed their formula but this is, I mean, I like the Festival palette of theirs, but this is so much better quality than the Festival palette. This is similar quality for me um, as the ice cream palettes are. Right. I'm going to pause you while I pop some base products on, and I will be back straight after this bubbly bit to uh, continue this eye look with you and it will be absolutely instant. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hey lovelies, I am back. Okay, I used the shade Stud Muffin in my brows to give me a blue tinted brows and as always I use my pink honey uh, honey glue in a strawberry sherbet. This is a UK indie brand and it's basically soap in a pot with a hole for you to put your um, spoolie into. They recommend doing it wet. I actually prefer using it dry because then your brows are sticky. So then when you put the powder on, the powder sticks to the slightly sticky soap and then sets it so it kind of keeps that shape throughout the day. Just my little top tip. Right, going in with this flat topped brush. And I'm going to go into So Good, which is the, the deeper blue that we put through the crease. And I'm just going to run this all the way along the little lash line. This is such a pretty palette, it really is. But there's enough kind of neutrally colours that if you're not wanting a full on blue look, you can do a more neutral look with it and just have like a pop of blue on your lower lash line or something. If you're heading to work and bright blue wouldn't necessarily be appropriate where you work. Don't see why, I mean. As long as you haven't scrawled an offensive word on your face, what's the difference? Eh? Doesn't affect how you actually work, does it? Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped but chunky, great for smudging the lower lash line. But you can use any smudger brush or dense blender brush. Uh, I'm going to go into Delish, which I've not used yet. This is this sort of cornflower, because I went into the Periwinkle. To start with, I'm going to go into the cornflower one to blend out the low lash line just to soften and buff that out a little bit. Gosh, my dark circles are dark today. I even use lavender powder to set the concealer as well. Try and brighten them up a little bit. Ah well. These things happen. Lack of sleep and stuff. Right. Now this it's just a really, really cheap lip brush 
that I bought from eBay years ago, and I mean years ago. And I'm actually going to go into Sugared, which was the other colour that I was contemplating using on the lid. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow. And just soften that. Going over it with my finger. And then in a corner. I like to bring my inner corner along under the tear duct, just join it in with the colours that I've run under my eye, but that's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not. That is so pretty. Right, my beauties, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some highlight on my face. Um, Put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be back with my final first impression thoughts on Blueberry Muffin. Don't go anywhere. I am back. Okay, I used my Essence um, Lash Princess with the orange top for my mascara. Highlight is Ofra's Pillow Talk and I am not just dazzling to the gods, I am dazzling them so they can't see what I'm up to. And the lippy is the Revolution Velvet Matte in shade Teddy. So, well, what do I think? What's my first impressions on this Blueberry Muffin palette? Um, I used a fair amount of the blues today. Haven't really touched much on the neutrals except maybe this peachy neutral here that I used to blend out the top. Um, so far, I'm really, really impressed with it. The mattes that I've used are the same quality as the ones in the ice cream palettes, which is by far the best quality um, eyeshadows that BH have ever produced. These are very, very close, if not as good as those. Uh, if you like this more cool toned colour scheme, you're not going to be disappointed by picking up this particular palette. Um, it's a sensible price. It's going to give you enough different looks. It's not just a blue palette, you've got browns, you've got greys, you've got a black here with some, some mica in it. So there's plenty of other looks that you can create whether you want to use the blues or not, but given how difficult blues are to create, these have been done really, really well. So this absolutely gets a thumbs up from me. My only complaint is that the only place that the ingredients are listed is on the slip cover, which I normally throw away. It's not. The outside packaging literally is exactly the same, except for the fact this doesn't have the ingredients on it. So for the time being, I'm going to keep hold of the slip cover. I'll probably end up cutting the ingredients out and just gluing it on the back of here or gluing it onto the mirror because although the ingredients are not really that important to me because there's nothing really eyeshadow wise that I'm that allergic to that I have to look out for but if at any point in time a friend wants to use this or I end up decluttering it for whatever reason I can't say why because it's a beautiful palette um, the person that's picking it up may need to know this information. So 
that's my only complaint. The fact that the ingredients are not on the cover itself, they're just on the slip cover. Um, and that's just me being really, really picky. So, yay. Absolutely recommend that one on the performance I've seen so far. So, if you're one of my 4F babies, now's the time to double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Every week, every day almost, my numbers are fluctuating um, where people are getting deleted off, which is it's really frustrating when you're a smaller creator. I mean, I know the numbers shouldn't be that important, but there's a lot of hard work goes into creating these films. And then when you see people commenting, I had to resubscribe, I'd been unsubscribed. If people are leaving because they're no longer liking the tutorials that I'm doing, they think that I'm boring, they've gone off my voice, whatever, that's fine. But if people are being deleted when they don't want to be, that that's really not fine at all and YouTube can't say it's bots that they're removing because it's actual people that are commenting and saying to me I'm having to resubscribe and it's people that are, that are interacting with the channel as well it's not that they weren't commenting or anything so yeah that's very very frustrating um, it's also worth double checking that if you've got notifications on that they still say all. Mine all got knocked back to personalised on every channel that I've got them on. Um, not that YouTube are actually sending emails at the moment, but they made that change without telling anybody. Here's hoping they change it back again without telling anybody. And that being the case, it would make sense to just double check that your notifications are still as you want them. Once you've done that, a little like, a little comment on what you think of this palette. Have you got it? Did you know about it? Are you now tempted to buy it since you've seen me using it? Were you waiting to see my review before buying it? Let me know. I'd be interested. Um, and a share if you could it would be lovely as well to try and, you know, spread the love, spread the 4F love everywhere. Uh, if however you are new and you've managed to trip over me, despite all of YouTube's walls they're putting up to try and stop smaller creators getting more people. Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is pretty much what you get. You get me blethering on about all kinds of everything and nothing at all. Uh, but I'm told that I have a very soothing voice. So that kind of makes up for it, apparently. Oh, and apparently I do quite colourful looks as well. I do have the odd neutral look, but... Bearing in mind, when I'm demoing a look like this, you can always substitute blues for browns if you are more of a neutral type babe. Uh, it'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. It's super easy. You just hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending emails again sometime soon. In the meantime, if you're looking for some me time, is that what I did there? I've got an awful lot of films you can watch. I've got other product reviews, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem. So you're going to find something to interest you, hopefully. So basically, as I've said from what seems like time immemorial, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge, darling. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.